Doing good. All right. Well, good uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, Tuesday, the first day in September. So we're now in fourth quarter now. Uh, we're very glad you're with us for our LinkedIn presentation today. We're here every Tuesday. And we're very glad you're with us. Uh, for those people on Zoom, if you have questions, we ask that you open up the chat box and just enter your questions there. For those people on Facebook, just enter your questions in the comment field. I am monitoring the feed, so I'll be sure to ask any questions that pop up. Uh, for those on Zoom, there's a couple different ways to use it. For most people by now probably know there's a gallery view, which is on the lower right, and a speaker view on the lower left. Uh, we ask that you really use the speaker view. And where that little red arrow is, right in between the picture and the uh, PowerPoint, you can drag that little white thing back and forth and make the picture as big or as small. You can make the ratio as big or as small as you want on a PC or Mac. Please note this event is being recorded and is currently live on Facebook. The recording will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and on the Career USA YouTube channels for others to view in the future. By participating in this event, and if you post a comment in the chat box or have your microphone or camera on, you give consent for your comments, name, and picture to appear. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff Morris. I founded Career DFW back in 2008 to help the unemployed in the DFW area. In 2012, I started CareerUSA.org to help people outside the DFW area. Since 2007, I've been facilitating and I lead the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. I'll tell you about our uh, topic uh, at the end of this presentation for this Friday. And since 2017, I've been a member of the practice interview team. Well, each week we have a couple, we have uh, three different speakers and sometime I'm the fourth. Uh, last week I filled in as the fourth. Uh, Locke Alderson, Terry Sullivan, and Ruth Lipsky. Uh, the reason we have a couple different speakers talking about LinkedIn is because everybody sort of focuses on something a little bit different. So uh, hopefully you'll, if you haven't been with us for a few of the episodes or a few of these workshops, please come back and join us and uh, join us again for, you know, make sure you get all three of them at least once. And I know that some of the speakers actually sort of change up their presentation. So if you saw Ruth last time, it may be different what she talks about this time. So this week, uh, Locke Alderson is our uh, speaker. He's going to talk about how to use LinkedIn for job hunting, strategies to get results. So Locke, thank you for being with us, and the show is all yours. You got me share screen? Uh, oh, uh, you should be able to. Do I click yes or no on that? Yes. You want to click yes? Okay. Here we go. That's an odd view, though. Yeah, it is an odd view. Well, for some reason, it's not. How's that? Well, almost. Yeah, just click on F5 or yeah. There it is. There we go. There we go. Technology is not my friend. With Jeff's help, I kind of do, do deal with it though. Well, I have been a recruiter for 42 years and uh, 19 years as a career consultant. There was an overlap there about 10 years before I retired from active recruiting and been working with those in job and career transition since 2001 and got involved with LinkedIn back in oh, the late 90s when it first came out, I guess. And it is the reason it's so important, it's the number one tool that recruiters use to find candidates. So they use it for sourcing hiring, man hiring managers, also take a look at it. It's been around, as I say, and if you are a member of LinkedIn, I strongly suggest that you sign up with YouTube. This is just one of the YouTube uh, examples that you can use and LinkedIn is so important because it originally started out as a networking tool among sales and marketing people and recruiters glommed onto it early and have used it to find people and the re reason that's important there are about 550 million people on LinkedIn worldwide about 130 million of them are in the United States so it's a tool that, re that recruiters use to find people okay and it all starts with your profile that's that's the terminology that LinkedIn uses for a resume. It's a little bit more robust than a robot than a, than a resume. Uh, and as you see there, 
it's a number of things that are there. There's a, there's a picture, I've got my picture there, a headshot. Again, it's important to have a headshot on your, on your profile because each of the different sections on LinkedIn is assigned values by LinkedIn and their algorithm when the search is conducted. The background photo that's there, you can do that. And what was it, Can, Can, Canva was the, the source for background photos last time, Jeff? Yes, Canva, C-A-N-V-A.com. C-A-N-V-A.com, I'll put it in the chat box. Okay, so that's an important part of it as well. You don't have to have one, but it's, it's nice. You notice underneath my name, you can, after your name, you can also put certain designations like an MBA or a, 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 per, a per, PMP designation. Don't put things like real estate because if, if LinkedIn catches you with something like that, they can shut you down for up to 30 days. Underneath your name, you have your headline. In headline, you have 120 characters to play with. If you don't do anything with your headline, it will default to your last job title in the employment section. Underneath that is something called open to job opportunities. And you can click, once you've signed up for that in your settings area, you can put up to five different job titles that you're interested in and see details. If you notice on that, underneath that, there's something that's called only to recruiters. I've got, I'm open to job opportunities only to recruiters. You can open up to all of LinkedIn if you so desire. Well, those are some of the things on your profile. We'll cover some more things in, in just a second. Uh, but completing your profile is one of those essential things that you want to do. Complete it and having the all-star status. That means you have a complete profile. You can never get 100%. They used to have a percentage ranking, but they, you can never get to 100%. So having a professional headshot, that headshot is going to be 400 pixels by 400 pixels. Again, you want it to be a professional shot. Again, it doesn't have to be shot by a professional, although there are groups that do professional headshots. I know when I was with Lee Heck Harrison, they would offer that service to anybody that was attending for $35 once a month. But you can do a selfie is just fine as long as it's professionally looking and you're dressed appropriately like you were looking for a job. The headline is another thing that's there. It's important and it should be the title of the position that you're applying for, not necessarily the position that you've had. As I say, if you haven't put a headline in there, it will default to the last job title in your employment section. If you're open to job opportunities, this is important because this lets people know that you're interested. I know when I was a recruiter, we looked for candidates who are open to opportunities because they're, they're more open to a recruiter's contact. Nothing dif more difficult for a recruiter to get a call, to make a call to someone and then say, no, I'm not interested. I know when I first started in the recruiting business and had my own recruiting firm, I was told through some of the instruction that you're going to make 500 5,000 calls uh, a year just to get 20 or to 25 placements. And out of that 4,000 are gonna be answer is gonna be no. So open to job opportunities is something that recruiters look for. Okay, about section, which is used to be called the summary, is an overview of your career. You have about 2,000 characters to play with there. Your contact information needs to be in your, in your about section in the first couple of lines because you want people to be able to reach you quickly. The more clicks that somebody has to make, the less likely they are to make the clicks. So we'll take a look at that in just a second. The experience section is important as well. To complete that, you want to use your job title, even the one that's your current job title might be something like member of technical staff three. Well, that doesn't mean a lot to a lot of recruiters. So if you have something like that, it might be just senior design engineer is a more appropriate title. Use the title that's used by use in industry. And a description of your duties, including keywords from your profession and hopefully some, some results. What are the metrics that you were measured by? What were the accomplishments that you had to include that there? We'll take a look at that as well. And the education award certifications and professional development. A lot of the LinkedIn profiles that I looked at, let's look at somebody's education, they just talk about when they got their degree. They failed to include the professional development. What have you done to keep your skills current? That's important as well, particularly if you're changing career fields. And your skills from your profession and endorsements. People can endorse. I know I endorsed a couple of people this week as I was working with them on their profiles. And lastly, the recommendations from coworkers and former bosses. These are basically letters of reference that you can obtain from them. It's a good idea to have that. They're easily available when you put them on your profile. Titles that you may have, if you have an unusual title, you also want to expand on what the title is. 
like if you were an accountant, what kind of account? Were you a cost account, manufacturing account, general ledger account? Those kinds of situations. What kind of recruiter were you? Were you a technical recruiter, a professional recruiter, an executive recruiter? Are all things that you want to talk about. The next section is on your profile is your, is your dashboard. And if you have a dashboard, it will tell you some statistics about, about your profile. Who's viewed your profile in the last 90 days? The number of times that postings that you have made, people will take a look at that and then search appearances. If you click on the search appearances, it's going to give you some information about who's been looking at your profile, what kind of background they have, and what are the keywords that they've used. Another area on your profile is the featured section. And you can include things in the feature section like presentations that you may have done. If you're a design engineer or a graphic design engineer, you might have a portfolio. You can have your resume, number of different things. My presentations are listed there on that, and they're on my profile as you see. Okay, on when you click on the search appearances, actually it first starts out with a, where the searchers work. And it wouldn't be nice to know who they're looking for, particularly if it's a recruiter, what kind of industries they have. For me as a recruiter, and those were the keywords that somebody used in a search on me, they were probably looking for a recruiter to find a job. Although in some places like Maxis Solutions, they may have been looking for a recruiter to join their staff. Lee Heck Harrison also looked at probably somebody I used to work with at Lee Heck Harrison. So those are some of the kinds of things that you can have on your search appearances. It makes it easy. I know when you know when somebody's looking at your profile, maybe they have some jobs for someone like you, looking for a recruiter at Lockheed Martin, perhaps. You can add those to your target list of companies that you may be looking at. Well, let's take a look at some headlines on your resume. These two, I don't think are very graphic, don't explain much, they're truthful. Somebody's employed or they're retired, but they don't state your background in as positive a manner as it can be. Seeking a new opportunity is another one. Again, it is a little bit more descriptive, but doesn't really tell the story. Formerly a VP of finance, lets people know that you have a background in finance, you were probably at a vice presidential level, and you're no longer doing that. Again, the formally it can be viewed negatively, so I would not include that. The next thing that you might want to have, is this one is an experienced media professional seeking a new opportunity. It gives some information about their background, their field of interest, and that they are open to new opportunities but it really doesn't tell a complete story. This is a little bit more meaningful, a little bit more informative type of information in, in the headline. A social media strategist who's been a content manager, seeking a new opportunity, they've got experience in digital and print media, they've worked in public relations, and they have marketing communications background. Supply chain, procurement, purchasing, pretty straightforward, but it tells a story somebody's looking for. A recruiter can identify who some of those areas might be looking further at your background. Again, I mentioned accountant earlier, somebody who had a background with general ledger and financial reporting. Or executive assistant. Again, I see a lot of those, but adding additional words like budgeting, event planning, can, can amplify what they're, what they're looking for. IT project manager. There are a lot of different project managers out there by adding the words IT, idle, and scrum. Again, it narrows the field down for the recruiter to know that this is somebody in the IT field. They've got a background in Scrum and Agile. They have an IDLE certification in all probability. And general manufacturer, general manager, manufacturer, get aerospace, also fairly descriptive at a pretty high level. So that comes a part of 120 characters that you get to play with. Well, let's take a look now at some headlines. I mean, the about section, your summary. Notice on this one, the first thing that you notice is the contact information is at the top of the section. And that's important because the first two or three lines of your summary is what appears when somebody looks at your profile. Okay, this is a pretty good one for somebody who has a background in financial planning and analysis. Again, they've listed that down there. FPNA is one of those terms recruiters look at. It's well enough known that they'll search on FPNA or MBA or CPA. Some others are not quite as well known. Those are some summaries. That's a summary that you can take a look at. Here's some more summaries. You can use in your summary, you can also use first person, which is not quite as uh, acceptable when you're writing a resume. It has also something like key competencies or skills. You know, you can talk about that you're creative. You can talk about some of your attributes as well as your hard skills. The next thing that's important on your profile are your skills and your endorsements. 
You can have up to 50 skills included. Uh, LinkedIn will select a couple for you and your top three skills are what they'll display on your profile. You can arrange that accordingly and you can add additional ones. You see where the plus journalism, if you clicked on that, it would automatically add journalism to your skills. If your skill is not shown, you can type the skill in the blank that's there. If it's one that's recognized, you can add that to your list. If it's not recognized, it won't accept it. And it will show those as well. Okay, in your skills and endorsement, I mentioned the three, three show up. Again, these are the three that are on mine. You can also now take a skills test in some career fields and take those tests. It's not a, a defining situation, but it is indicated that you have expertise in a good field, in that field. And you notice mine. Those are the three that it selected. The endorsements that are included there are by people that I knew at Mullen International. Unfortunately, I didn't pick up some of those that I had at, at Lee Heck Harrison. I don't know how that, that changes. But when your skills and endorsements, here's is what I mean that you can select three. You notice the push pin next to career, career counseling, executive search, and technical recruiting. If I click on that, it removes that from the list, and I can go below and perhaps include recruiting or internet recruiting below. And I click on that, and it moves to the top three. Over to the right, you see the, the four bars that are there. That's right over here. If you click on that, you can drag and drop so that perhaps technical recruiting would be the top one that's there. That's interesting because those that can show skills. And again, if you have skills that you're trying to emphasize that aren't current on your, on your profile, you can make those at the top of the list when they look at skills, which is helpful. The next area we want to take a look at is, is your profile really public? And the way that you do that, you can go through that and take a look at things that are there. Before we get to that, let's take a look at your, at your URL. All of us have, when we sign up for LinkedIn, have a URL. It's usually your name and out eight to 10 numbers and characters with that. That doesn't look too professional when you're doing it. So what you can do is you can go in and click on that. Let's edit your public, public profile and URL. And when you do that, it shows this. This is Gail Houston, an example that she created. And this is after she did that. Notice Gail Houston after hers, there were a number of numbers. She deleted those and click save. If it's an acceptable term, and there are four Gail Houstons in the United States, and she was the first one to use it, you'll get the green check mark. If it's not acceptable, like John Smith, you might want to, you'll get the red X. So you might want to put John Dot Smith or Don, John Dash Smith, Dash Texas, or MBA or CPA, some other characterization. I was working with a candidate in Atlanta, and she put that down. She took those off and she put the chief recruiter in Atlanta on hers. Well, that's something that you can take a look at as well. Again, who can see your email address when you're checking your privacy settings? If you're looking for a job, you probably want them to be able to see your email address. In terms of your connections, I don't recommend that you click, that you open up your connections so that everyone can see. Because if you're looking for a job, a recruiter can look at your connections and find other people just like you, because all of us have people in our connections that do the same type of work that we've done. The next thing is letting recruiters know that you're open to job, seek job seeking preferences. By clicking on open to job opportunities the first time, it allows you to enter some information. The five top jobs that you're interested in also allows you to enter information about location that you're willing to work as well. And your commuting preferences. Most of us don't want to work, or you've taught recruiters that you don't want to drive more than 25 miles to work. So recruiters, when they do a search, they limit their search to 25 miles. If you've done a search online with any of the job boards, you notice that that's the default setting. Well, let's go now and take a look at another profile. You've seen it for more than 10 seconds. There are a number of things that you look at, but this is what recruiters see when they open up your profile. And notice I've opened this one up to all LinkedIn members can see this profile. The things that are important is the detail that you want to have there, in terms, particularly in terms of your headline. My contact information is there. Most people will look, try and look at some, some profiles as we're at the end of the presentation today and see how those go. But the headline, as I said, is vitally important. You can inf put information that's there. You notice on mine is career consultant, recruiting consultant, contract recruiter, all the kinds of things that are there. The job preferences is another area. It's open to job opportunities. The little blue pencil out there allows you to change those anytime that you go online and look at your own profile.
Okay. It's also good to add if you're unemployed is to add a current position. And what do I mean by that? Well, I, you can say I'm not, I'm unemployed. Well, you're currently a position, your position you're looking for is that you are looking for a position. This particular one is a project and program manager who's looking for a job in the telecommunications industry in the Dallas Fort Worth area. This is an old slide, but it's still perfectly valid. He's currently working there and he's currently looking for a job. If I saw this as a recruiter, I'd wonder what in the heck he's been doing for three years, over three years to try and find a job. We've got a headline that, that talks about what he's looking for, gives the industry, he gives a little bit of description about his background in terms of area of expertise. He might talk about the different areas of project management he's worked in, whether it's, it's telecommunications, is it hardware, software, administrative kinds of areas. You can also, by doing that, because that's one of the things that LinkedIn looks for is a current position. Some of you have opened up and have not put an ending date for your last job, even though you left that company. I know I talked to the candidate in Atlanta. She's left the company, but she's still on the payroll through the end of the year. So she can put legitimately that she's still employed with that company. Again, a lot of people, when they leave a company, they'll put the ending date for the, that they left the company. So you do want to have a current position to show on that. You can create job alerts once you've gone through your job preferences. Adding those, you can create alerts for these different types of jobs simply by clicking the on off button over here. These radio buttons for moving them from left to right. Gives you some idea. You will get job alerts whether you select like daily or weekly. You get a thumbnail sketch of what the job is on a daily or weekly basis in your email that you set up. Next thing we look, look, want to take a look at is what do re recruiters really look for when they, they do a job search? First thing, probably the most important one, is job titles. They look at your current job title and past or present in both your headline and your employment section. They look for keywords from your profession. They tend to look at your skills. They'll tend to look at your industries. How many of you have tried to apply for a position in healthcare? If you don't have that, they'll look and see that you don't have healthcare experience and move on to the next candidate. Or perhaps they're looking for education. I know I interviewed for a job with an electronics firm in Richardson, and they were looking for a top 10, a graduate of a top 10 business school in the United States with an MBA. And since I'd attended one, I, I put that at the top of my resume on that one. They also look at how long you've been with the company and what's the length of service. And once they've narrowed the search down with the search terms, they'll probably look further at your profile or your resume. So how does LinkedIn actually do a search? Well, as I mentioned earlier, it gives every part of your profile a score. And there are values for each section, and the scores based on the and your, your scores based on the sum of these values and how often you use LinkedIn. Higher scores tend to move to the top of a recruiter's list for any given search. Again, completing having a complete profile and attaining all-star status. Having an exact match in your job title with the current and previous job titles and in your headline. Those three things are in sync. It gives you added values. That you're open to new opportunities. Again, recruiters like that low hanging fruit. People that are open to opportunities and don't say no when they first heard from them. Keywords from your profession or from the job posting are kind of important. Likewise, your skills. And we're going to take a look at some, some actual searches in just a minute. Your geographic location. As I say, 25 miles is usually the the search things that recruiters look for, although I've had candidates I've worked with, said I only work, I work about five miles from home. They lived in Frisco, so there are enough jobs in Frisco, like my profession, I shouldn't have to look further. Are there people that might live in Denton? They're willing to work in Dallas or Fort Worth. There are ways that you can get around that as well, but those are things to consider. First and second degree connections. People who have over 500 connections, are they active in using LinkedIn as a, as a tool? And their comments on posts and articles, and writing a blog. I know I posted information about this presentation on LinkedIn on, I think it was on Saturday morning that I did that. That was increased the ranking that I get on LinkedIn. So what does it really, a recruiter really see when they do that? This is a particular search for a product manager in the Seattle area. They were looking for someone with a background in product management and product marketing. Again, they would consider somebody with a more senior level position. They would consider also somebody from the San Francisco area, and they had some target companies that they wanted to put down. Amazon and Microsoft and Fluke are all headquartered in the Seattle area. 
So those are the things that you notice that a recruiter looks on those three areas. Here's another one. This was for a project manager in the Chicago area. They'd consider somebody from, from New York or San Francisco, somebody had a background in business strategy and analytics, okay? And you notice that the companies that they worked for, perhaps they're looking for Google, Facebook, Evernote, and LinkedIn out in the Bay Area. And they'd also consider somebody from Northwestern University was high on their list of criteria that they were looking at. So how do you apply all that? Let's look for a job. Well, when you click on the jobs tab up at the top up here, the search box opens, the screen opens and you have two search boxes, a search jobs and a search location. Typing in a name of something like design engineer, there's a drop down list. Once you start your typing, your typing, well, a drop down list will show what other job titles it might be consultant could be there. If you click on the drop down list, it will automatically default and omit the location and default to the United States. So you also want to type in a location where you're looking and type and then click on the search down at the bottom here. The next one is when you do that, when you've opened up the, the LinkedIn, there are a number of filters. This is a way that you can refine your searches. Notice that there are a couple things that are important there. The two that I recommend, the one that I recommend to people is that you click on the past week or the last seven days. The reason that this is important is the first response to a job posting on the internet, usually within the first two or three minutes. There can be as many as two or 300 respond in the first hour. So it's important to get your, your ore in the water as quickly as possible. And by doing that, by saving a search and creating job alerts, uh, again, you'll be, be re receive notification of those each day or each week that you put that in there. Another one that's fairly new is the salary information. LinkedIn has adopted this from Indeed.com, which is probably the best job search engine that's out there. Again, that's information there that you can click on that. Jeff, are you doing that? The red circles? I'll have yeah, to get that. I'm just helping point things out. Well, I appreciate it. That's why I use the arrows, okay? You can also use some things that are on LinkedIn. There's an easy apply tab over here. If you use that, the unfortunately, it won't always allow you to take a resume and insert it with that way. So you, when you use easy apply, you want to check and see if it will allow you to upload a resume. Otherwise, it will upload your profile, which it may not be customized to the job that you're applying for. It also has some other information on filters by the industry that you're interested in, the company, from the company locations that are there, because there were 634 positions for a recruiter in the Dallas-Fort Worth area when I did this search. Again, most of those jobs, as you notice over here, are full-time, and most of any job search will going to be full-time. But for someone like me that's only interested in contract or part-time or temporary kinds of positions, you can search for those as well. And there's locations that are there, and it determines the location, as I say, by the information you input in your profile when you do your settings, your background information, your settings area, if you put a location there. Okay, So that's using LinkedIn filters. As I mentioned, creating job alerts. Once you've done a job alert for talent acquisition specialist, and that's another term that's used for recruiting these days. Again, although it's used in this country, it's not used in Great Britain. It has a different meaning in, in England. Again, it's not one that I want to use, okay? But for the United States, talent acquisition is certainly one that's been around a while. P personnel is now called people specialist. I know there's a, Southwest Airlines uses that particular terminology for their HR function. But you can create those search alerts by clicking on this button. It will then send you an alert uh, daily or weekly, depending on the delivery option that you've selected. You can search for, the next thing that you can look at is optimize your LinkedIn profile by looking at people. If you were to do a search for yourself using your terminology, so I was going to look for a recruiter in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and if I didn't show up in the first 10, 10 screens, that's 100 profiles that you see right there, like this, and I might want to do some looking at what some other people have in their profiles. Again, I used to be when I'm active in recruiting, I was usually in the first two pages of the LinkedIn profile. But you can go in and look at what they have in their profile, adopt some of the words that they're using, and put it in your own profile. See if you don't get a higher rating on something like that. Or well, you can look for people in a company that you might want to look at, do a people search at a company. If I were looking to try and find a recruiter at Thomson Reuters, I would do a, a, a company search, I'd enter the company name, and then I'd enter in 
a recruiter, because when you do that, you can look for people that way in a company. And this had, when I did a people search for people at Thomson Reuters, it came up with 227,000 people who had Thomson Reuters in their profile somewhere. They'd said some interaction with Thomson Reuters. Okay. And Thomson Reuters, there's two companies, Thomson Reuters, one has a P in there, one doesn't. So they're two different companies. So you have to make sure you've got the right company when you do your search. But that's a way to find out information about that. Another way you can do a company search this time and look for people. I did it for a company and I entered the, com the company name here. And then you can look up different people at that company. You notice there were in this one, I can't remember how many there were, but there were a number of people like that. You can find recruiters or other people in the company that way. Once you clicked on a company search for people, it opts you, gives you the opportunity the company search is up here. You click on the people and this is what results. 106 employees met that criteria, where they live. You notice that some of these are the United States, where they've studied, where they went to school, what functional area they work in, and what, are, what they study when they're at that school. I have a few mutual friend for Jeff and I, when he was looking for a job about a, earlier this year, I think it was in January, he just left JC Penney, was looking for a job. All he did on his profile was to change this section, his headline underneath his name, changed that and he changed his summary. This was the first line in his summary that you see right here. He got a job, he got half a dozen contacts, he ended up landing at Baylor Scott & White as a recruiter. I think we're about wrapped up, Jeff. This is about normal, about 30 minutes. We're open to having some people take a look at their profiles. If anyone is interested in the, pre the presentation, I know Jeff has recorded on Facebook and it's on YouTube, you can send me an email at lockalderson at gmail.com and I'll be happy to send you the whole slide deck so that you have that. Very good, Lock. Thank you very much. So if anybody would like for us to look at your profile, just remember it'll be going live on Facebook and it'll be recorded. Uh, put your name in the chat box and we'll uh, call you up on the internet. If we have any volunteers. Okay, nobody wants to look. Let's see here. Do we have anybody who wants us to look at your profile? You're welcome to look at my profile just to show them. Locke, do you want me to call it up or do you want to call it up? Let's, look, let's take a look at my profile for just a second, which okay. is live. Okay. You notice there are things that are there. You notice the contact information is there. If I were to contact information here on, on most people, oops, I don't have a live connection anymore. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm going to do that on terms of jobs. Let's do take a look at me and my profile. If I look at contact information on somebody, this is my contact list there. I don't want people with to, to have, I think I've got a mobile address, but I don't have a, a, I have an email there as well. So I can be reached that way on my contact information. But for most of us, if they haven't opened up their contact information and it's limited to the first three connections, I don't have any way to reach out and contact you. Notice in my about section, let's connect is right there. Okay. And then that's in the first three lines, but I have to click here. A lot of people have it at the end of their profile in their about section. This is just some of the information you have about at least a thousand. I think it's up to 2000 characters in your profile. This is the featured selection as I mentioned earlier. This is my dashboard and it varies day by day as to who's seen my profile. But if I click on the search appearances, these are where the people have looked. There's somebody from Deloitte. This is the candidate I was working with in, in Atlanta this week. And if I click on that below that, what do the searchers do? And what were the keywords that they use? So that's something that you can take a look at. in terms of the profile. Okay, it's good in your profile to vary it. Again, 
the editor that's in LinkedIn, you can't do a lot of things with it. It won't allow you to add bullets. But one way to get around the bullet situation is to click on something like the see more. And you can use asterisks like right over here, or you can use dashes. And I've varied this. You can have some bulleted items. This is feedback from a candidate that I've had. It's a way to do that. And some candidates that were included from when I was at Lee Heck Harrison. So that's some information. So we have some candidates that would like to do a job search, Jeff. Have we got one of those yet? Or somebody would like to look at a resume? Nobody has, nobody has volunteered. So Notice you're holding your hand up. She's talking on the telephone. Okay, she's not talking to us. She's talking with her hands on her phone. Okay. Well, if we were to do a job search and I was to do something like credit, you notice as I start to type credit, there's a number of different ones that are there. If I type credit analyst, I've already got Dallas Fort Worth in the listing that's there, so it defaulted that way. But if I go over to all filter and go to the past week, this is what I was mentioning on that, then apply that, it narrows the jobs down to 13 jobs. Rather than having to go through that and notice the limitation on location is to 25 miles and it's in the past week. Now, if I weren't satisfied with the results I got, I could do over here and do clear search and it cleared that out. It kept my search, but eliminated all the filters that I'd use on something like that. If anybody would like to take a look at their, their profile, I'll be happy to do that if we get somebody that gives us that information. Pop, pop mine up just for a second, just so we can show them what the what my uh, background. Okay, so notice here that there's a jobs tab. If I want to get around that, I can go to people from the drop down menu. And now I'm doing a people search and I'll go to As Jeff is one of mine and my prior searches, we can do that. Notice Jeff's background situation. He's done that. I don't know whether he did it through, that looks like a Wordle situation where somebody's done their resume and taken it through Wordle to come up with the words that are in his profile that appear most frequently. He's got the book that Jeff's written. If you haven't read that book, it's I highly recommend it. It's inexpensive, but it's also one of the most uh, to the point thing about job search that I've read in a long time. And Jeff also has his contact information on his profile up here in the background photo. And that's something that you can do, again, make it easier for people to reach out and connect with you. Again, if I talk of that, since we're first degree connection, Jeff's information is there. If I talk to somebody else and they were not first degree connections and they aren't open, then I won't be able to reach out and talk to them. Uh, one other thing I want to point out, if you go down to the about section, Oops. Okay. Now I don't have my phone number at the beginning, but go ahead and just if you'll put on there, see more for a second. Okay. Jeff so has got in, that, in this first okay. paragraph uh, here, let me, I'll do a little circling here. So in this, well, where do you want? Uh, whoop, clear drawings. Um, that's good. So uh, I happen to list, so here are my, here is my strength finder things here. But what I did is I went and used those words, whoops, stay right there. But what I did is in my first paragraph, I went and put those words, I built them into my paragraph to explain to somebody who I am by using those terms. So that's something you may want to do, uh, you know, that you can just as a way to use strength finders uh, to help explain who you are. Jeff has also used first person. It's not recommended for resume, but he's used first person here. It gives a little bit more information about him and some other skills. So he's talking about a lot of soft skills here, strategic leader, quickly spotting relevant patterns. Again, the only thing fault that I would have with that is that there are no results from that. Again, to the extent that you can give a relevant result, something that can be measured you want to include that as well. Nothing wrong with what he has. Again, if you can amplify it though, it's always good to do that. One other thing I think we ought to definitely talk about is search terms. So right here at the very bottom of that, you'll see that I have listed a bunch of search terms because LinkedIn needs to see a search term three to five times to make it really relevant. So a lot of these terms are also in my work thing, but you want to be very, very careful because you've got to make sure that you're leaving a space before yeah, and you, after the, uh, 
the pipe signal because if you don't do that, it really won't be searchable. If you were to put, uh, you know, project manager. Pipe director or a backslash does the same thing. If you decide to use a comma after operations there, right here, then a space, it will make operations searchable. But by having the, the pipe character, and that's a shift character on your keyboard, just above the enter key on most of your keyboards. Okay, it's a shift on that key just above the enter faction. You want to use that. That and the backslash are good yeah, things. If you don't want to be a product, you know, a product manager slash IT, you want to make sure it's product manager space slash space IT. Yes, because right. otherwise it won't be searchable. Right. For those people who may not be, okay, what's wrong with my profile? That may be the simple thing that you need to do to get recognized and found. Okay, we have somebody who wants to submit their uh, LinkedIn profile. So let's take a look at it. The okay. name is G-L-Y. I'm sorry. G-L-Y-N-N-I-S. No, G-N, I'm sorry. G-L starts with a G. G-L-Y. N-N-I-S. And it's uh, last name is Swan. Spell please. S-W-A-N. So is this you? I don't know if this is. Yes, that's me. I'm sorry, I was on mute. That's okay. okay. Very good. All right, so there we go. Okay, notice that Glenna is a Glenna is a second degree connection. Reader. The first thing I'll notice on that, I connect. She has her Gmail, so I can get in touch with her that way. If you're searching for a job, you want to have your contact information open, either in your connection to your contact information section or at the top of your about section. She's open to work. She's got some good titles that are there. Again, the about section, again, she doesn't have that. Again, make it as easy as possible. I would put up here either your, your phone number or your, your email address. You don't have to say, you know, that's it's your cell phone. You don't have to put it, you know, connect with me. Just put them both up there. That way people will know. We use shorthand today. We, most people recognize an email address or a phone number, and that's how we try and get in touch with people. I, I would also break up those paragraphs and maybe make them no longer than four lines. Three yeah. lines would be preferable and put a space because the more text that's there, the more blasey eye people get, where if you have short sentences uh, it tend, with a space, it tends to uh, read a little bit better. Okay, you can also break that up with bulleted items. Okay, so you have two or three bullets after each paragraph at the end of three or four lines. You can break it up and have a list of things, either Jeff or profile or my profile, and you can take a look at the different ways of putting things down to reach people. Okay. Okay. Under your under your contact info, under your experience section, talent development, principal consultant. Principal consultant is a generic term. When I was with Oracle, we had thirty thousand consultants. Not all of them were the same, obviously. You've defined it at a, at a level that's probably five to 10 year consultant, but what did you do for Circle K or Circle 17 services? Okay, so give more details of what you've done in these jobs. That's the way people search and find you. Let's take a look at your, at your skills. Got our certifications, which is good. Our volunteer experience, that's another section that you can add if you've got to volunteer experience. And her skills lever. You know, leadership, payroll, and management, okay? You wanna try and get this number right there. That's the number of endorsements that you have. The maximum that it will show up is, is 99. But I think on some of mine, I've got over 400 endorsements for those. So those are some areas that you can work at. And by going on your particular profile, the blue pencil will allow you to select different ones if you want different ones to appear in this skills and endorsements area. She's got some good recommendations. Okay, for where she was. Okay, this is also very beneficial. And she's got some a specific list of accomplishments, the organizations that she's worked with. And your interest, these are companies that she's following, okay, which is also important to take a look at. I would recommend that if you're going to apply to a, if you're going to apply to a job, always make sure you're following that company because that is one of the things that recruiters can see on the recruiting screen. Uh, when they call up and they do a search, they'll see how many people, how many of these people who are in my 
results actually follow the company. Okay. Somebody else. Well, yeah, look for we have another job. one on Facebook. Uh, Steve Grimes, uh, G R I M E S. Steve Grimes, G R I M E S. That's uh, Steve. Steve, is this well? We're gonna have to, it's about a thirty-second delay here before Facebook will see. So, okay. uh, Steve, if this is you, let us know. Notice one thing that's on this. He's got a connect button, even though we're second degree connections. And if I click on that, he has profile, but I still can't con contact him. Okay. But I can just send him a connect information. When you do that, you want to always try to add a note. Yes, you have the right, Steve. So I've just sent him an invitation. Okay. That he'll have. But let's take a look at Steve's profile again. I mentioned creative director. So he's got his details there in terms of what he's looking for. And then the all details that he's looking for. This is where on terms of location that you have. If he were looking for outside of the Dallas or area, there, location is one of those areas that you can put, like if you were interested in, in the panhandle of Florida. I had a desk, somebody was looking for desert in Florida. I worked with when I was Lee, Lee K. Harrison. Notice he's open to full-time, but he's also considered remote contract, part-time and temporary positions, and he's actively searching for a job, okay? So that's some information that's available to people when they look at that. Okay. What he's done here in his about section, again, I would recommend he's got, he's got his portfolio is right here, okay? And I think that's, where you can reach out to him as well. I think that's an email address. And in some of that's blue, I can automatically click on it. These are his awards. He's got some pretty impressive awards. He's got some featured sections where he's got, you know, one of his awards in terms of radio broadcast and then freelance. And he was with the Richards group here in the Dallas area as well as a copywriter. Notice how he's used bullets instead of all narrative. I would try and line these up. The thing I would mention here is to line up so that it's all here. So that the concept conceptualizing uh, would be under the C there. It's a little bit easier to read from that standpoint. Some editing times of situation. Okay. Got some recommendations. His skills endorsement, copywriting, creative, and digital copywriting are important as well. Looks like a pretty good profile, Steve. Does he want to look for it? Uh, we have uh, time for one more here. Uh, let's see here. Vanessa, V-A-N-E-S-S-A. -S -S uh, last name is Z-E-I-H-E-R. The very first one right there, I think. Okay. Yep, that's yes, her. Okay. The thing that I'll tell She's got a connect button. So I'm going to say, I'm just going to, rather than do that, I'm just going to say connect on this one. Let's see, on her contact information, I cannot reach out to her because I don't know how to do that other than that I've connected with her. Okay. Again, putting her contact information in the top two lines of her, of her about section is important. Let's see if it's at the bottom. Or it's not. So it would be difficult to try and reach out to her other than indirectly. And the more work that you make a recruiter or hiring manager do to get in touch with you, the more likely it is they're not going to go to the effort. Good description in terms of her about section, in terms of her competencies. Um, again, lining up the bullets so that the, the information here is lined up under the D makes it easier to read. Again, it's some editing things that are not Significant, but it's just something to think about. Uh, 
Okay, she's taken some of the LinkedIn certifications, which is good. And she's listing them there. Again, I mentioned on education, when I talked about that earlier, about having, what have you done recently in terms of your professional development? Again, you've done things in most everybody's case that have kept you current. You're taking LinkedIn seminar today, a demonstration on that. Her endorsements, her skills on endorsements, marketing strategy, integrated marketing, and brand development. Okay, if she has others, and she probably has so more, these are the others that she can choose from. And you notice the numbers after her, each of those, that's how many people, times people have endorsed her for those. With the exception, Vanessa, of the not having your contact information in your about section or being able to do that, and you can open that up. You don't have to put it in your contact information here, but having in your about section while you're looking for a job makes it easy for me to reach out and contact you. Okay, somebody want to look for a job? Yeah, somebody give us a, a name of a company and we'll pop that in. Make uh, company. Company or job? Um, or a job, a job title. What would you like to pop something in the chat box and we'll uh, pop it up here. Let's see if it's still there. Scrum Master. So currently there's 8,000 positions in the United States. Let's see what happens when we get it down to Texas or Dallas. Okay, past week we're down to 1300. So location, where'd location go? There we go, oops. Just down just a tad. There you go. Very first one there, Dallas, Fort Worth, Dallas, Texas. So now we're down to 227 Scrum Masters. And then you can pick a salary, whatever you'd like to have. So if you pick 100,000 plus, you're down to 87. Go oh, lock your mute it. Lock, you want to hit Alt A to unmute yourself. Rose, I see the promoted jobs there. Some of those don't aren't even scrum master, like uh, an engineer, if you go to the top. Well, again, they've got the word scrum and master somewhere in the job posting. That's why it came up. I see. Okay, don't ask me to the logic of it. I'm not a computer guy, but somewhere in that posting is the word scrum and master. Right. And you could put, you know, different things like agile, if you wanted to put that in there, Rose. That would be another way to refine the search. I see. But use the search terms that are in your profession. You know your job and what's used in it. Use the terms, play around with the terms because you may not get results. And as I say, if you don't get the results that you want, you can go in and clear the, the search starting out with Scrum Master and just add more to it. So if you wanted only Dallas Fort Worth area, or if you wanted Denton, you could put that in there as well. Okay. Yeah, because I see right here the top job is lead software engineer. Okay, so that lead software engineer, if we look at it, which is over on this side, somewhere in that, they've got the word scrum and masters in that job posting. I don't know where, here it is right here. Work with the scrum master. Yeah. No, I'm going to be the scrum master. Okay. Got it. So again, it's the, the computer is only as intelligent as the words that have been put in there. We got time. 
One, one more. Rose, did you have another question? Sure. Is there a way that you can say I want the words that I'm using in the title? Um, Instead of in the, you know, body somewhere? There isn't on this one. Again, if you go to indeed.com, you can do that and put it in the title. I don't know that you can do it in the title in LinkedIn. Okay. Thank you. Uh, just another comment. Patty uh, made a comment. I do not include my birthday on my profile for security reasons. So, you know, you may or may not. Your birthday isn't as important. You, the two important things that you need to have on your profile is how can I contact you? So a phone number and an email address. And if you don't want to put your phone number, that's okay. You Let's can always get email. a Google voice number. So yeah. you would like to find out how to do a Google voice number. Uh, the North Dallas Plano Focus Group had a speaker about a month ago talking about that. You can go, always go back and watch that if you'd like. So um, just as a, you know, that's just another option. You don't even have to have a phone number as long as you make sure you do that. So uh, Locke, thank you very, very much for today. Uh, I want to just share uh, next week, uh, Terry Sullivan will be our speaker and he'll talk about how to uh, use uh, how to create a LinkedIn profile that uh, sells your con tells your contacts who you are, what you do, and how you can help. Like I said, everybody talks about something a little bit differently, so it's good if you can to join us for a couple different speakers. Uh, if you're in the military or a military veteran, active or past, uh, you can get a free year of LinkedIn premium if you go to uh, veterans.linkedin.com. The only requirement is you must list your military service in your LinkedIn profile. Uh, please be sure to join us. We have lots of other training. Today was actually our 98th uh, workshop that we've put on since uh, COVID started since March. Uh, so tomorrow number 99, we'll be uh, interviewing Wednesdays at one o'clock. We'll be doing session number five, talking about how to analyze a job description. Um, so the first five lessons have been sort of what to do before the uh, job interview, the next five, six through 10, will be all about the actual interview and then some uh, follow-up stuff on 11, 12, and 13. I'll put in a plug. Uh, on Thursday, we will be doing Effective Resume Thursday. This Friday, this Thursday, Carol's gonna focus a little bit on the one-page bio. So if you're interested in uh, getting some more information on that, please uh, consider joining us this Thursday at one o'clock. On Friday, the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group, we're gonna have an open forum talking about whatever it is you wanna talk about. And then Patty is going to tell us all about Crystal Knows. So do you wanna tell us really quickly what Crystal Knows is? Sure, I'll give a little preview. Um, so for those of you who aren't familiar with Crystal Knows, it's, um, or they call it Crystal, but you go to crystalnose.com and you can look at the information there, but it's about personality traits. Um, so you can look up, uh, click on any profile in LinkedIn, whether or not you're connected to them or not, and it'll tell you the personality type of that uh, person. And it'll help you to interact with them. One of the things in Conversation Coach it says, uh, I need to say, call Jeff Morris to get him to hire me. What are the things I should say? What shouldn't I say? And so forth. Um, it's really handy. Also, what I've, I've found recently, which is really great, is you can go in and um, if there's a job that you're looking for, like you were in the job uh, section, um, it will tell you um, if that job is a good fit for you based on what you've uh, done. So I will be doing a small um, demo on that, a short demo. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, everybody can try it out. And if you go in and go to crystalnose.com, uh, you can sign up for the free trial. And uh, I believe you get about 10 free profiles. Um, I wouldn't go crazy and use them on everybody that you know. You should save them for your people who you're interviewing with. So um, it's helped me and also that the people don't know that that you've used this uh, crystal nose on them. <laughs> it's no. pretty accurate, actually, too. Jeff yeah, can she, she attest. Went, ran it on me, and it's probably ninety percent accurate. Uh, it's it's pretty <laughs> amazing what it knows just from your uh, profile. So join us this Friday. Uh, it should be a very interesting presentation. Yep. Uh, 
I'll mention again, if anybody wants the presentation that I did, it's Locke Alderson, all one word at gmail.com. I'll put in a plug for the presentation tomorrow about taking apart the job posting. That's vitally important to tailoring your resume to the job that you're looking for. All right. So yeah, thank you. So just as a reminder, these sessions will be recorded. They are on the career, will be on the Career DFW Facebook page. And in a couple hours, I will upload it to the Career USA YouTube channel as soon as the video gets processed. Please uh, follow us on Facebook. And if you do, every time we go live, you'll get a little alert on your phone that we're currently live. And if uh, you need to go back and watch something, join us on the Career USA YouTube channel and subscribe to that. And you'll find out as I load up new programs. Uh, on the YouTube channel, this is what it looks like. If you just, it's Career USA on YouTube, just click on the playlist where that blue arrow is, and up will pop uh, one of the six or seven playlists that I've put together. And every video I upload goes into one of these categories. And uh, like underneath LinkedIn, you can click on the view full playlist and you'll be able to see this presentation. You can see the one Locke did three or four weeks ago and uh, the ones that Ruth has done in the past. So they're all there for you uh, as long as I'm allowed to record them. So just as a reminder, Career DFW is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Locke, uh, Terry, Ruth, myself, we're all volunteers. We're all here to help you land your next opportunity. So hopefully we, you know, we survive on donations. Hopefully that when you do land your next opportunity that you remember that we helped you in some uh, form or fashion and you'll make a donation to help uh, us continue to do what we're doing. And if your company happens to offer matching donations, please look us up, allow your donation to double in value. Uh, and if you don't see our name on the list, please let me know and I will get our name on the list. I've done that for a couple companies already. So uh, Locke, once again, thank you very much. Everybody else, thank you for joining us and hopefully we'll see you uh, later in the week. Have a great uh, afternoon. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Locke. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great Thank you. job. Thank you.